There have been many technological advancements in history and prehistory. Many revolutions such as agriculture, writing and mathematics which changed our world drastically. But nobody ever mentions trade, a simple idea of exchanging one type of good for another. A practice that's been with us for thousands of years and assisted our growth as a society immensely. But its early existence was far more crude than you may think. In the past, if someone in your town didn't grow it, herd it or make it, well tough luck because you were not likely to get it. In fact, with the lack of transport and communication methods, you wouldn't even know it exists, a far greater problem. The development of trade alleviated both of these issues, allowing new tools, technologies and cultural practices to spread. But that's not how the inception of trade began. In comparison to all other early advancements and inventions, trade did not see much prevalence until quite late in the Paleolithic period. We can speculate it always existed to some degree, but more in the form of a gifting culture rather than actual trade. That's because humans back then were self-sufficient, they hunted and gathered their own food, made their own tools, clothes and accessories. They were also nomadic people, never staying in one place. Their capacity for what they could bring with them was limited, leaving very little opportunity for the exchange of goods. But there was one exception. In some places, there is clear evidence for the movement and spread of materials such as obsidian and flint. Both stones possessed amazing tool-making properties, were very rare and yet circulated far and wide, most likely through trade. At that point, currency such as coins did not exist yet. These stones were likely exchanged for a whole lot of food, furs, jewelry or something else that we're not aware of. The exchange of these two stones were some of the first instances of trade in prehistory. Later, during the Neolithic period, which began roughly around 10,000 years ago, trade was starting to become a major force in moving local economies forward. The development of agriculture, which is the growing of crops and the domestication of animals, began during this period. Families and tribes began to settle in one location where they could grow crops and rear animals. This new way of life allowed them to develop a surplus of goods such as crops, grains and cattle, which could be traded. As some of these villages developed new tools and unique crafts, those began to be traded too. This is where trade really began to prosper as goods began to be traded between different communities across greater distances. Trade around this period mostly existed by water, settlements along rivers enjoyed this almost exclusive benefit of trade. With no horses, no wheels, as well as no road infrastructure, trade by land was difficult, but it still existed since the benefits of trade could not be ignored. As the efficiency of agriculture improved with the development of new tools and technologies, less and less of a village's population was required to work the fields. This gave some individuals the freedom to specialize, become specialized builders, toolmakers, weavers, as well as traders. The local merchants organized the exchange of goods between communities and made a living from profits. With new developments in each community, merchants began to play a huge role not just in the movement of goods, but also in the spread of technology around the world. This period is known for its massive progress, new tools, technologies and ideologies sprouting out every few hundred years. 
The world was evolving fast, especially in the Egyptian and the Mesopotamian regions, they were the center of all development during this period. Trade back then was heading towards a truly massive scale. Massive commerce undertakings such as international caravan operations were organized by merchant families, trade organizations as well as government entities. They hired people to transport high volumes of goods from nation to nation for them. The popular commodities moved through Mesopotamia during this period included metals, ivory, textiles, various oils, vegetables as well as semi-precious stones. Among the many goods circulating in the Mesopotamian trade network, copper was the most important. At first, it circulated in low quantities, but towards the second millennium BC, metallurgy in Mesopotamia has greatly expanded. Various tools, weapons and personal objects began to be crafted from copper and then bronze, a clear upgrade from their outdated stone technology. These metals were often imported into the Persian Gulf and exported to various towns and cities along the Euphrates and Tigris rivers. In exchange in this high volume commerce operation, the Persian Gulf received enormous amounts of barley which they likely exported elsewhere. Such trading activity during this period has only really existed in a few places on earth all of which were located alongside large bodies of water and more importantly rivers. Mesopotamia and ancient Egypt, two thriving river economies with booming trade networks and prosperity unmatched by any other region of its time. Their success remains a clear example of how important the adoption of trade really was.